Are the Mitchell lines? Eritrea's delegation met with the President of the Military Council of Chad. One patient diagnosed positive for COVID-19 in tests carried out today. Putin blames West for tensions since end of Cold War. Earthquake with magnitude 6.1 strikes Taiwan. In our domestic news, senior Eritrean delegation composed of Foreign Minister Osman Saleh and Presidential Advisor Yaman Gabrab met at N'Djamena today, 9 May, President of the Military Council of Chad, General Mohamed Idris Debi. The Eritrean delegation delivered a message uh, from uh, President Assias and stressed Eritrea's readiness to consolidate bilateral and regional cooperation. General Mohamed, on his part, thanked President Sias for his initiative and stated that Chad shared Eritrea's commitment to foster relations. Also present during the meeting was Eritrea's ambassador to Sudan, Isa Ahmed Isa. General Mohamed also briefed the Eritrean delegation about developments in Chad and his country's determination for an inclusive national dialogue. One patient has been diagnosed positive for COVID-19 in tests carried out today at testing station in the southern region. Accordingly, the total number of confirmed cases in the country to date has risen to 9,738. The total number of recovered patients stands at 9,631, while the number of deaths stands at 103. Ministry of Health, Asmara, 9 May 2022. The Eritrean Youth Organization in Germany has held a congress in Frankfurt. At the congress in which over 100 youth from several cities of the country took part, Head of Public and Community Affairs Mr. Kahasaito Walda gave an extensive speech on the objective situation of the homeland and role of the youth and reminded the youth to strengthen organizational capacity and increase participation in national affairs. Secretary of the Public and Community Affairs, Mr. Fitzum Sahle, on his part, conducted a seminar on the role of the youth in the transitional period. General Consul of Eritrea in Frankfurt, Mr. Kabrab Tachasta, on his part, gave extensive briefing on the significance of the strong organizational capacity and of timely imperatives. A brief report on the YPFDJ Congress, held from 14 to 18 April in Rome, Italy, was also presented at the Congress in Frankfurt. Finally, participants concluded the Congress by preparing a common understanding and charting out a future activity program. The Ginda Subzone Bee Farmers Cooperative Association conducted its third Congress on 5 May. The Congress was scheduled for an earlier period but was delayed due to the COVID-19 pandemic, Mr. Naamin Bahlebi, the Secretary of the Cooperative Association, said, indicating that becoming a member of se has uh, several benefits, including boosting production and creating a market. Mr. Naamin stated that the association is exerting efforts to that end, noting that organizational capacity is power. Mr. Umar Yahya, administrator of Ginda Sabzon on his part, reminded bee farmers to exploit the natural resources in their area and boost production that will meet the market demands of the subzone and beyond. Finally, participants elected a five-member executive committee that will serve for the next two years and expressed readiness to triple the number of beehives as well as open a marketplace in Ginda town. Ginda Subzone Bee Farmers Cooperative Association was established in 2018 and has 44 members. That was our domestic news. Please stay tuned for the international right after the short break. Russian President Vladimir Putin blamed the West for escalating tensions in Europe, saying it had incorrectly assessed the outcome of the Cold War. Speaking to senior military officials, Putin said Russia would respond 
quote unquote, adequately to any Western aggression and would develop its army further. After what it regarded as its victory in the Cold War, Washington's judgment has been clouded by euphoria, he said, leading it to poor policy choices. Russia has amassed tens of thousands of troops on the border with Ukraine, demanding that NATO refuse to accept the former Soviet Republic as a member and guarantee that no weapons or troops will be deployed there. Putin said he hoped for constructive talks with Washington and Brussels on Russia's demands for security guarantees as there were signs the West was ready to work on the issue. He said Russia's proposals were no ultimatum, but it had nowhere to retreat over Ukraine. Speaking at the same meeting, Defense Ministry Sergei Soigu said the United States had deployed some 8,000 troops near Russian border and alongside NATO allies, frequently mounted flights by strategic bomber planes close to Russia. Attempts by NATO to get the Ukrainian army involved in the alliance's activities present a security threat, Shoigu said. An earthquake briefly shook buildings in Taiwan's capital, Taipei, today, though there were no immediate reports of any damage. Taiwan lies near the junction of two tectonic plates and is prone to earthquakes. More than 100 people were killed in a quake in the southern part of the county in 2016, while a 7.3 magnitude quake killed more than 2,000 people in 1999. That was our news for tonight. Please stay tuned for a recap of tonight's headlines. Eritrea's delegation met with President of Military Council of Chad. One patient diagnosed positive for COVID-19 in tests carried out today. Putin blames West for tensions since end of Cold War. Earthquake with magnitude 6.1 strikes, Taiwan. That was our news for tonight, dear viewers. It is good night from us.